Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Young, and I'm here with uh, Rich. Uh, I believe you're where from? Phoenix? Tucson. Tucson. Okay, mm -hmm. well, wonderful. And uh, we're going to have a, a conversation here. And uh, maybe you could just uh, start out, uh, Rich, and just tell me, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, you would like to ask or some of the health challenges that you have. And maybe... Uh, we could start there with uh, you kind of just describing your lifestyle and what you're dealing with. Okay, well, uh, we've exchanged a couple of emails since um, our first call and the first email you sent me with lengthy description of the protocols and, and so forth. Okay. And, uh, most of that I've been keeping. Uh, well, I shouldn't say most of it. I don't know. It's Maybe it's more like half of it. I've been keeping up with because I haven't been able to do the colonics. Okay. I have not, uh, uh, I haven't had the money to do yeah. the colonics. I'm not able to borrow money. Um, I'm working on, and I'm pretty close to having a GoFundMe campaign ready to, um, ready to launch. Uh, but I've been doing the pretty well, well, very well, I would say the, um, the um, the liquid feast protocols and so forth and all the other you know all the other supplements and so forth. Okay, so um, um, so what was your diagnosis? Um, well, I declined to do the. Um, this started back in September, uh, early September, late August, mm -hmm. with. Uh, in you know intestinal cramps and some bleeding and so forth after i had done a kind of an epsom salt flush i see uh, and um the cramps continued for a month or so uh, um you know and then i've been on a december that i you know finally um had a call with you hmm. Um, and then somewhere in that time, maybe November, so I start, started having edema in my legs. I see. Uh, um, which is something I had before when I had Lyme disease, uh, quote unquote, had Lyme disease. Because um, I don't believe it's what they tell us it is. But anyway, at that time, 2006, I had the symptoms in my legs. And... Um, What's they, the they, what's the current they, status of that? I mean, are you still in? Well, having, it's ongoing. It's 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 ongoing and it's worse. It, my my lower legs are they're actually smaller now, but they're very hard. Um, the upper legs are now uh, have the edema in them too, and it's really it's really getting worse and difficult. It's more hard to, I see. to exercise. I can't are you uh, uh, are you taking uh, the L arginine max four times a day, one scoop? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed any improvement from that by using that formulation? Um, you know, I haven't I haven't noticed it in the legs. The thing with my legs is, and it's accompanied by, I I, I guess you would call it neuropathy. It's a tingling is a, well yeah neuropathy is the same thing of poor circulation your your your, your blood's not flowing your microcirculation the purpose of taking uh one large scoop which is approximately uh, 10 to 12 grams uh you do that four times a day religiously not once a day not twice but four times a day and you put it in approximately 120 uh mls or four ounces of distilled water it's very important that you do that. The other thing that's very important is that uh, you, you get some uh, therapeutic treatment on that. And that can be anything from uh, lymphatic massage uh, to uh, elevating uh, your uh, feet on a, on a chi machine that will literally make your legs go like this back and forth. But they have to be elevated to get that circulation going but the lymphatic system is uh in the buildup of of waste in the interstitium or the interstitial fluids things just aren't flowing until you get things flowing 
it's like stagnant water, you know, it just, yeah. you know, things break down. And when right. things break down, this is what's that, why you are not getting the success. You haven't broken through this circulation challenge. And the reason for the colon hydrotherapy is that you generally can't do this orally. You have to do infusions uh, rectally to uh, tap into the hemorrhoidal vein, which allows then a hydration uh, to an extreme to be taken into the vascular system. And that excess is then pushed out to the interstitium organ. While you're taking the L-arginine max, while you're on a liquefied diet, while you're focusing more on uh, you know green foods and green drinks, uh, pureed. So it's uh, you know very very important that 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 I emphasize that if we can't improve your circulation, it really doesn't matter what you're eating or what supplements you take you take because it can't flow. Things have to flow, just like the ocean behind me. I mean, could you imagine if the tide couldn't come in? It was blocked. I mean, it just the, the, the ebbs and tides have to come in and go out, come in and go out. And so opening up circulation uh, is very, very important. So if you cannot afford to do uh, hyperperfusions using colon hydrotherapy, where you infuse up to six liters of fluids rectally, uh, you know, then what you have to do is look at enemas. And enemas was described, yeah, in, in, in uh, the email that I sent you. Yeah, yeah, you did. And let me say that um, I actually did my first enema yesterday. And I have done enemas before, and I cannot explain to myself or to you why I have not been doing them because I got the gear. Um, but I finally did yesterday. And um, I found that it physically it was so difficult for me to get on the floor that, um, and I think I can figure out ways to do this. I may have described to you before, I live in a place where, you know, I, I don't have a toilet. I have a, um, you know, I use a um, composting, composting bucket. And I, you know, I brought that in my house, but you know, I just made a mess because I couldn't hold it all because could, I couldn't get up, mm -hmm. off my off the floor to get onto the yeah. bucket quick enough. So yeah, well, that's a that's a problem if you don't have a toilet. I mean, that's that's a general yeah. assumption that we yeah. do have is sure you have sure. a toilet because if you had a toilet, then you could get a uh, a, cl a colima Col board where you could board, yeah. yeah a colima board which you could actually set it up. I don't know yeah. if you can set something up with the bucket, you know, a chair and a bucket where you yeah. could actually use that. I mean, you'd, I mean, you could, you'd have to use your imagination on, yeah. on how you yeah. could I, sta stabilize that because you don't want to fall and hurt yourself. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, that, that would be problematic, yeah. but. Uh, but curiously, uh, I mean, when this happened, you know, and I made a mess on the towel and, you know, all of that. And it was very exhausting for me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but after I was up and around and, you know, cleaning things up and the, the equipment up and so forth, um, I felt a noticeable kind of, I felt a little invigorated. I felt like I had- Well, you do because you, your first time getting, getting alkalinity into the blood rather than going through the alimentary canal, which is problematic in itself. Yeah. Uh, so you're bypassing the stomach, bypassing the duodenum, you're passing the small intestine, you're passing the large intestine, you know, you're going right to the rectum and, and to the hemorrhoidal vein. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the most effective. Another thing you could consider is suppositories. And you can make, mm -hmm. I think I put a paragraph on suppositories and you make these yourself by taking coconut oil uh, and adding to that the salts, the L-arginine, the drops, you know, the pH drops, uh, the chlorophyll. And, you, and then once you make that mixture, you pour it into the ice tray. You know, I mean, very simple. I mean, when I say ice tray, I don't, I'm not thinking of something made out of metal. I'm thinking more of something uh, that would be, uh, you know, more 
plastic oriented where you can put that in the re freezer section of your refrigerator and freeze those and then insert that suppository rectally, uh, anally into the rectum uh, and then allow that just to melt into that into that area and allow that to then absorb into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Very inexpensive, you know. Very is that like the size of an ice cube or what? Yeah, it's about the size of the ice cube, but you could find, you could find, if you could find a tray a little smaller, if you have to cut them, cut them lengthwise, you can cut them in, in half or a quarter of them. But, to, uh, mm -hmm. but be, what happens when you, when coconut oil hits your skin at 98.6, you know, it immediately starts to become oil and it slips, uh -huh. it slips right in. Uh-huh, I see. That's why you use the coconut yeah. oil. Right, right, right. Uh, so, and, and it's also uh, isn't affected in a negative way with temperature mm -hmm. other than it solidifies, but mm -hmm. that's the point. You want it to solidify so that you can then slowly, gradually make sure it doesn't have any sharp edges, by the way, but gradually, sure. slowly, and, and you can all hold it in your hand and you can mm -hmm. see that just by touching it, it begins to melt, but mm -hmm. you want that to melt inside the rectum. Right. <clears throat> right. Interesting. Let me ask you one question about the animus. Um, do you recommend um, inserting while on your side or the hands and knees position? Whatever's comfortable, <laughs> whatever, where you yeah. can get, where you, you can manage to allow that one liter bag to flow in. You know, usually you cannot hold a full liter. So right. you have to be able to clip it off and then get onto the bucket in your case or toilet mm -hmm. uh, to relieve yourself. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you want to hold it as long you as want to hold possible. As long as, you, yeah. yeah, as long as possible, but as pressure builds up, you know, you need to kind of gauge that you have enough time so you don't have an accident. Yeah. But of course, well, to avoid, it, avoid yeah, that. I did, it, I did it on my side yesterday, and that was part of the reason I had so much trouble because in order to get up onto my hands and knees, in order to get up on the thing, I had to drag my legs under me. And that, that was the difficult part, but I thought it occurred to me if I start, because I think this is the way I used to do enemas when I've done your cleanses and so forth before it was on my hands and knees. Yeah. So that would make it easier for me to get up onto the bucket. Yeah, well then that's the way you need to do it. Yeah. Okay. And I can make myself- And, and, and of course, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just, these are yeah, suggestions or recommendations uh, okay. that you can do, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, these are things that you need to, to be comfortable with uh, as you're doing this. And only you know your body uh, right. and what, what you're capable of doing. So you want to make it as convenient and easy as possible. It's the most convenient and easy way to do this is to have assistance with it right. and that's where the colon the hydrotherapists who do these types of things on a regular basis mm -hmm. uh, can really make a difference yeah well you know i do intend to go that route and i do intend to raise the money and i do have my my statement written uh for the gofundme thing i wanted to ask you one thing about that it's just you know, kind of a side thing um when I said what I was doing, uh, basically, I was not real specific. I said I had a serious health health challenge. Yeah, and, that's fine. Um, that I was going to take a natural health uh, route and that I said um, uh, Medicare doesn't cover most procedures uh, that I want to do at this point. And I'm an internationally known naturopathic practitioner and has been consulted and a plan of action has been prescribed. Is that something that? Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's, that's right. fine. I mean, it's uh, you know, there there's a lot of generous hearts out there that so care much. about their brothers and sisters, and they have resources, and they they just are trying to find someone who is seriously in need of help, which you are. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's why we're having this conversation. Right. Um, when, um, when the funds are available to that, what, um, what will be the, what will we have a three-way call or something with the uh, colon hydrotherapist? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we could I think do she, that. She had to move and I think she's got her office set up now. And uh, generally speaking, she seems agreeable to do, you know, the, uh, the implants and, you know. Sure, not a problem. Yeah, I, I'm happy to help you uh, and also to help her understand what needs to be done. Right. Okay. I'm also, I've also been, I have a friend who's got a Rife machine. So I've been doing uh, Rife treatments, pretty regular basis, four or five times a week. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's, you know, I know you've talked about it in your book, Sick and Tired. Yeah, well, Rife machines, uh, of course, is emitting, you know, different variable or different frequencies uh, to deal with specific uh, conditions of which uh, is more of a allopathic uh, type of uh, mindset where you're actually trying to treat uh, through uh, breaking down, let's say, matter that has... Uh, formed in an irregular way, you know, a mutation, uh, or it may be a mass or a tumor. Uh, uh, if those are specifically directed, of course, that can be very helpful because it's indiscriminate. That particular frequency of what you choose is indiscriminate to other tissue that may be, that's healthy, that may be next to that. So you have to kind of direct that frequency on the area of the body. What I prefer is to naturally raise the life force energy through plant, a plant-based diet, you know, alkalizing compounds uh, and salts uh, that are co common within the body, such as sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, i.e. the electrolytes in order to restore the environment of which the Rife machine is directed more on the matter. So, you know, rather than focus on the biological aspects of your physicality, the idea is to change the internal environment or the terrain of which then those biological aspects of your body, the physicality parts can alter and adjust uh, and adapt to this healthy environment. And of course the, right. the, the, Rife machine, you know, here again is an allopathic mindset, which is a keel mindset. Is this something is has invaded your body, or uh, this is a, 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 a not environmental problem, but it's a specific problem that can then metastasize to other parts of the body, which is really not uh, doesn't represent the truth. The truth is is that any cancerous condition is a systemic problem that localizes at the weakest part of the body. And cancer is not a disease of the tissues. It's a, an acidic condition of the fluids of the body of which cannot be mediated by the Rife machine. Right, I get it. Well, I, as I'm hearing you say that, I, you know, it occurs to me, because it takes me by the time I get ready and drive over, the, over there and you know, sit on the machine for half an hour and hold on to it. And yeah, you, you would, it, you would, it occurs you, to me I'd be better off staying home and doing the, doing the enema infusion, no matter yeah, how you, you, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Me. You'd actually be better walking over there and walking back. Yeah. yeah. The exercise would do you, would be of more value because that's what's, you know, you have to, the body's meant to move. You right. know, and if fluids aren't moving, they become stagnant. Right. And it's about circulation. Mm -hmm. Circulation equals percolation. Yeah. That's why when you added more fluid into the rectum, which was taken up by the hemorrhoidal vein, that created more hydration, which helped create more circulation and percolation. It's, but you have to break open these areas of block, these blockages. 
And that's where, you know, infrared sauna, that's where colon hydrotherapy, that's where um, the lymphatic massages, this is where the colon hydrotherapy, these are non-invasive, non-medical treatments right. from not, not, not the disease, not right. treating any specific disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we're, we're actually trying to improve circulation to reverse the dis-ease you know, which is then manifesting as a symptom of that disease, which can only be there if 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 the body's waste is not being properly eliminated through the four channels of elimination. Right. Okay. So you. Well, have I, have to tell, you I, have to, I have to tell you, I've, I've gotten very creative about telling people when they ask me what what do you have, what diagnosis do you have. And, and I've had to, you know, explain to them that, you know, your diagnosis, if you want to call it that, or, or what you have said to me um, is the equivalent of, you know, a medical doctor saying to me such and such and such, you know, in terms of how somebody's going to take it serious. And so that's been an, an interesting thing because you know everybody wants that medical diagnosis, but when you tell me I have uncompensated, say, the diagnosis and or uh, un, you know um, auto intoxication and some of the yeah, things, I mean, I can, I, 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 can, I know I, what that, I know what that means, you know. No, I don't. I don't mean to use a, you know, a descriptive word, you know, and my intention is not to shock anyone, but. I get that, you know, yeah. But it's, you know, being perfectly clear, your condition is I live in too much shit disease. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's no treatment for that in the medical world. No. Other than, you know, change your lifestyle and diet, you know, right. but... You, you don't you don't get come to those conclusions by going to medical school. I'm sorry. Oh, my, my my discoveries would have never happened. Yeah. I would have been on a different path. Would have never happened. The reversal of cancer and other serious health challenges, those discoveries and how to reverse them would have never happened if I had gone to medical school. I get it. Mm -hmm. It's not like I can't go to medical school. I attempted to several times and was stopped by people that love and care me. They, in fact, there were doctors. You know what one of them said to me? You would not survive the residency. <laughs> he said, you, right. you would be just the way you are. You'd be, at, you, you'd be questioning, which I did and have and continue to do, question the validity and the scientific efficacy of what's happening in critical care. So you wouldn't survive. And, and, and because you don't, you're not a conformist. And it's not like I don't want to be. I said, I really want to be, you know, I, I really want to get along. I said, but I, I can't be doing things that don't make sense. And that's that's the bit that's the number one sickness that people suffer from. Lack, listen to me, lack of common sense. Forget this viral stuff. Forget this cancer stuff. You got, you've, got, you've got more brain cells in your gut than you do in your head. You know? So, you know, start, start, start trusting your core. Start trusting your core feelings and stop listening to all the confusion and BS that's coming out of people that are really suffering from a condition called ignorance. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. I'm totally so, with you. So like, am, I I like, uh, I, am I a heretic? Am I a quack? You know, I mean, that's how they have to label them because they can't ta attack me scientifically. And this is not about me. This is about you. But, I, but you brought up the question. 
you know, that you're talking to other people. And when you start talking like this, because of their own disease and their own desires to want to be labeled and but put put in a nice little box, the Lyme's box, the cancer box, the 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 AIDS box, the viral box. You need to break out of your boxes and realize that there, there are no diseases, there are no sicknesses. What you experience are symptoms of not taking out the trash. And it's building up in your own house of health, polluting the internal environment. And it's and, and the car, if you relate it as, as an analogy to a car, the car is honking and you're not listening. So, you know, this is what you need to do is you need to listen very closely to your innate intelligence. I don't need to be telling you this. You already know it. I'm just reminding you, okay? Yeah. Your innate intelligent knows, and it's speaking to you, but apparently you don't, not you, I'm saying others, you're listening, aren't listening to what their body's telling them. Okay, so the body's honking. Wake up, you know, you know wake up. Stop it. Stop polluting the internal environment of your body. And if you can't get rid of the waste, then you will be sick. But this is how simple it is. You do not have to get a medical degree. And you do not have to subject yourself to stinking thinking. When you already have the intelligence within if you were just listening. So there is a solution to the pollution. And the solution to the pollution was amplified. I don't know if you're still hearing me.